Community Connections CPMS Local sounds, thoughts, passions, and success Celebrating local Your neighbor's got a story to tell Happy Friday, Waterloo Region. It is the 24th of February, 2023. You're listening to CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman. Today in the studio, we have Rosie Samra to do a live on-air in-studio performance accompanied by Hiba on guitar. These feeling my lungs, they feel so heavy in my rib cage. Is this really my tongue? Can't seem to control it. I say I can't believe I used to breathe the air that she would breathe to follow along. Look at how to speak and look at you to leave. Are these really my legs? I decide where I want. Just what I did when I left your car and walked home. I can't believe I couldn't see who you really were. I should have listened to my friends. Now the lessons are learned. I hate this feeling driving me insane. Better start the healing, get you out. Lovely. Rosie Samra in studio on CKMS Community Connections. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. You're a Waterloo native. Yes, I a am. Kitchener native. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. yeah. So why haven't you been here before? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Honestly, um, I didn't actually really reach out to any radio stations until I had first made music, which was a couple years back. So mm -hmm. I released the first song uh, Sunday afternoon in 2019. And at that time, I didn't reach out to anyone. I really didn't know how anything worked. Um, and then I released Crazy mm -hmm. um, in 2020, February of 2020, right before all the COVID-19 stuff went down. And I reached out, but obviously a bunch of studios, including this one, were closed for safety reasons. So. Yeah. Yeah. Since then, it's just been kind of ping pong back and forth with a lot of stations, but this one has always been really, really welcoming to me. So thank you again. Oh, you're welcome. Um, but yeah, that's that's been the reason. Although, if honestly, if I knew about this opportunity, I definitely would have been here quite a while <laughs> ago before. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've released four songs altogether now. Yes. Yes. Of which we do not have the first one. So. <laughs> the first one, I honestly like our acoustic arrangement of it better, which you will hear later today. Oh, cool. So I think that that will probably be a little bit more lucrative than the other one. All right. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll put that on the air yes. and uh, record it and play it during the day when you're not here. <laughs> we'll get to enjoy the music. I appreciate that. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. So the first recording you did was well before the pandemic. Uh, yeah, so the first recording I did was in August of 2019. Um, that's when the song was released. I had tried a few studios um, within the first six months of 2019 because I was really, like, just really out of my element, to be honest. I didn't know anything <laughs> about studios or recording or quality or yeah. what mixing and mastering was. Like, I didn't know any of these things. So I was just kind of <laughs> fumbling in the dark, like, hoping that there would be a studio that would be a right fit. And it took a couple tries, but we found... Um, one that at the time was pretty good um, and since then I've just been moving around to different studios since then uh, okay. because I like to work with new people and try out new things obviously so oh, that's, that, cool. that's been cool yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so which studio are you with now um, there is a lovely guy named Mike Defario. He works with Blacktail Recordings. I work with him. He's actually in Mississauga. Oh, um, okay. Which is nice. He's he's really wonderful at mixing and mastering. He's the one who did the song that you've just heard on mm -hmm. my own. He helped a lot with the whole like vision that came with that song, and I really appreciate his work. So that's who I'm with right yeah. now. Give him a little plug in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blacktail Recordings. You guys should go right. check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and this, so this was what, mm -hmm. close to four years ago at this point. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> but listening to you sing, you didn't start singing just four years ago. Oh, no, thank you. I, I started singing way back. I've been singing since I was like, I mean, I think honestly everyone starts off singing and something yeah, yeah. along the way makes them lose it, which makes me really sad. But um, thankfully, I never lost that like childlike wonder for music. I always, I always get so giddy when I get to perform. It's actually a little bit of a downfall because I'll be singing a sad song and oh. I'll be trying not to smile because I'm having a good time. Like I love performing uh. so much. Um, but yeah, I've been singing since I was really little and I started getting like kind of, I, I joined a choir when I was eight and I liked it a lot. So I mm -hmm. kept going. And then when I was 10, I think we started on like private vocal lessons, which definitely helped oh, really? me a lot. Oh yeah. It definitely helped me a lot because it'll kind of sharpen and fine tune all of the things that you're not great at. So like, for example, I didn't really know how to control my breathing or, or when to breathe and they kind of iron all that stuff out for you. So having that at a young age definitely helped me get to where I am now, which is awesome. Okay. So what is it about breathing that's different from just talking? <laughs> that's a good question. Well, I don't know if you've ever been, I mean, you, I have to imagine are very talkative because you're hosting a radio oh, station. <laughs> well, I would say that it's, it's up to the guests to do the talking. <laughs> right. But if you've ever been on like a bit of a tangent, you might have to like pause and go, <gasps> you know what I mean? Like you might have to just take like a breath mm. with singing. You have to kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, designate times to breathe before you start singing the line. Otherwise, people will tell that you're running out of breath at the end yes. of the line, and it sounds not the best. So, right. <laughs> yeah. Is that something you have to keep in mind when you're writing the songs? That's a good question. No, and it has come back to bite me in the butt many times. <laughs> <laughs> you maybe we'll hear with the song Crazy. It feels like I'm borderline rapping. Like, it gets really fast, mm -hmm. and it's very annoying to pace my breathing around that. Um, so, no, it's not something I think about when I write, but it's definitely something I should think about when I write. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it, it's not. I mean, honestly, the, the melody and the rhythm and the lyrics come way before all of that stuff. That's way more important to me than the actual singing yeah. technique, which comes much later. Melody or lyrics first? Oh, <laughs> depends on the song. Melody, and then I fill in the lyrics most of the time, but sometimes okay. uh, with On My Own, I'll have like a master sheet of like tiny little cut up bits of poetry or something that I haven't, that I wasn't able to fit into a song. And if I'm having like writer's block, I'll go back to that sheet. And that's actually how I wrote On My Own because okay. I had like a little poem that was one of the verses and then I built off of that. Yeah. So yeah, it depends. <laughs> it's amazing how different yeah. people are because there's a lot of poets who put their poetry to music. Yeah. And then there's musicians who add yeah. words to their songs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's very interesting. Music is so cool like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how long have you been writing music? Since... 2019 that was well Sunday afternoon was kind of like the first real song but before that I think when I was like 16 or 17 I was like I should just give it a shot and let me tell you it was bad like I was not a natural <laughs> songwriter oh my gosh some of my old stuff I'm like well thankfully we didn't go to a studio and record that because it was not the best but yeah. 
yeah, it took some time to get better at it. It's definitely not one of those things that comes to me supernaturally, like the lyrics in particular. I would say that that was something that I had to build on. The melody comes to me pretty naturally, and the singing. Um, those are things that are, mm-hmm. I feel like are ingrained in me. The lyrics are a little bit harder. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ever thought of collaborating? Have somebody else do the lyrics for you? Because that's the hard part. <laughs> that's a good question. I think, honestly, I haven't really sorted out all the nitty gritties of working with someone else for writing because in Canada, at least, the actual like owning a song and owning the creative licensing of a song and that sort of thing that all boils down to who wrote the song so if i were to ever write a song with someone else or Mm -hmm. let someone else write that song it would be a nightmare trying to sort out even just like beyond the royalties it would be like oh well i wrote this word and you wrote this word you know i mean you would know you're we run into that with canadian content requirements for uh, radio broadcasting Right, because so you need to have a certain set of requirements, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. So you get somebody like yeah. Brian Adams who mm-hmm. you know uh, helped write the lyrics. Right. So he gets half a credit for that. Right. Uh, but he didn't produce the, sh- uh, <coughs> the song in Canada and he didn't um, have Canadian Canada. musicians. Right. And so Brian Adams' music doesn't always count as Canadian content music. Which is absurd because it is. that's yeah. very annoying. Yeah. yeah. So I think that the is actually changing the rules to make it easier for Canadian oh. songwriters to get credit for their stuff. That's but it's awesome. it's terrible for uh, singers who sing other people's music because they very, will no longer be considered Canadian content. It's very annoying. Yeah. It's it's a lot of like lines that you have to kind of stay between. Yeah. Um, but I would in the future. I definitely would work with a lyricist or something like that because I... You know, I, I have a lot of appreciation for poetry, especially as someone who struggles writing it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so mm-hmm. where, where do the lyrics come from when you've written a song? That's a good question. I have actually a lot of friends, like when I release on my own, right? It's like this bitter, horrible, like breakup song. Like, oh, like I, I should have just known. I wish you had left me just curious because I, I shouldn't have walked into that situation um and they're like oh my god what happened and i'm like nothing i just, I just <laughs> you made it up i made it up <laughs> i'm very imaginative i yeah. think i get i have like a very very wild imagination anyone who knows me knows this so i really just draw on how i imagine certain things would feel and then also like if i have even just like a small crush or something i will blow it up in my mind a lot and kind of write something based on that which sounds very silly but i mean it's gotten me some good songs i really like them so yeah Yeah. for what it's worth i didn't get that overwhelming sense of of angst from the song that you were just singing oh good (laughs) i'm not sure why that is but i think i was just carried away by the melody and wasn't Um, paying that much attention to the lyrics yeah the lyrics are pretty brutal i'd say (laughs) they're very intense yeah 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 did you deliver <coughs> the lyrics differently here in the studio with uh, having only him on uh, acoustic guitar to accompany you? Yeah, we had um, in the actual like recording studio, the chorus was like amped up a lot. We had a lot of synths added onto that. And like in addition to the guitar, we had like layered guitar and layered vocals. And like the layering makes it a lot more intense. I really like the stripped back version, but ultimately like the studio version, I think punches a little bit harder because of those that layering effect yeah. oh, new album coming out rosie and hibba unplugged <laughs> we were thinking about this i was like we should honestly record some of these i really like the acoustic version of Miss Connection and sunday afternoon a lot like those ones i, I think hibba really killed it with the arrangement and we can look forward to that a little bit later on oh yeah oh, okay. i hope good, you guys good, good. like it yeah yeah mm-hmm. you want to do one right oh, now sure yeah right. did you want to go into Miss Connection? sure okay <clears throat> excuse me so rosie samran Hiba on guitar, mm-hmm. doing missed connection. All right, let me just. Uh... I've been tripping, I've been falling 
it all in some new obsession How could I not notice You were right there with me Also falling, also tripping All while I was too unfocused If I could have seen What was in front of me Then maybe I'd have shown it I was tripping, I was falling All alone in my obsession And I just felt hopeless Worth a shot to ask if you feel it Or if you believe it Who'd have, who'd have thought That you'd feel this way too But I'm glad that you do and it all fell right into place In perfect time and space After an endless chase I, 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 I just can't comprehend No, I don't understand Keep coming back again I've been tripping, I've been falling All into my new obsession How could I not notice? You live right there with me, also falling, also tripping All while I was too unfocused If I could have seen who was in front of me Then maybe I'd have shown it But I was tripping, I was falling All alone in my obsession And I just felt hopeless I was so blindsided, so not open-minded I should have seen this from a mile away Out of touch, misconnection, and you know exception All because you felt the exact same way No, no I've been tripping, I've been falling all into my new obsession How could I not know it is? You were right there with me, also falling, also tripping All while I was too unfocused If I could have seen who was in front of me Maybe I'd have shown it but I was tripping, I was falling All alone in my obsession And I just felt hopeless Missed Connection by Rosie Samra Live on air, in studio mm -hmm. On CKMS Community Connections That's wonderful Thank you Yeah, I really like the acoustic version of it I think Hippo really killed it with the arrangement Yeah, she did it's it's a very sparse arrangement. Mm. It's uh, you know it's, it's not overwhelming. It's just no punctuation. It's it's more like percussion than it is is guitar. Yeah, I feel like it it hits a little bit harder. The original song, like the studio version, is very very heavily reliant on the production, which I like as well. Mm -hmm. um, I like what we did with the studio version, but I think that the acoustic one kind of just like punches a little bit harder. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you write for an instrument? Do you write for a synth or a guitar or a piano? Typically, it's been like, yeah, it's been um, the instrumentals uh, come my way one way or another, and I kind of choose one that I like. And they end up, they start out pretty bare bones, and we kind of build them along the way, depending on what I write for the chorus, and we'll add layering to that. But I do write over instrumentals, usually. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have a really cool vocal technique. Oh, it's like you're you. squeezing, you know, a hundred notes <laughs> in where... Uh, that is very flattering. I'm definitely going to use that. <laughs> I do like doing riffs and runs a mm -hmm. lot. I do. I do a lot of that fun technique stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, but, but they're individual notes. It's not like you're flowing from one note uh, up, up to another. It's not a continuous thing. You're, you're yeah. actually enunciating different notes very, very quickly. Yeah, they're very distinct. It's a singing technique that I've been practicing since I was really young. I think it's that's why I got better at it with age. Mm -hmm. But um, it's definitely one of the things that I was that got pointed out to me very early on in the music career because I tend to go a little bit overboard sometimes. Like in the studio, I had to remember, like, don't you don't need it on every single line. Like that's yeah. overkill. And do you do you write that out as as part of the musical score? That's just how it comes out. I mean, I wouldn't write in like make sure that you do five notes here instead of one, <laughs> but um, it comes out in the studio, and then I get told, "Rosie, relax, please. <laughs> like you're going <laughs> really hard for no reason." <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, when you've got 
-hmm. Do you write out your music? Does, does it take like mm -hmm. notes on a sheet of paper? Oh, no, I'm actually not. The reason Hippa's here today and the reason she's at most of my gigs is because I don't actually play any instruments. I'm <laughs> You're a vocalist. I'm a vocalist and vocalist only, to be honest. Um, I write, obviously, so a lyricist mm -hmm. as well. But other than that, like the most musically in tune I'll be is when I write a melody over a song. But you can ask Hippa. I drive instrumentalists crazy because I just go, oh, can you do that thing again? And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> you need to use words. And I'm like, I don't know what words to use because I don't I don't write out the um, the notes or anything like that I my phone is really my note sheet at this point like I just record my ideas on it and then I'll, I'll record them on my laptop and have track of them but I don't write on any like song sheet yeah. music sheets or anything like that so you're recording sound on your phone to record those ideas you're yeah. not typing something out saying you know these no notes no out. okay no and then how do you get that to Hiba do you just let her listen to the music and Oh, well, to be honest, Hiba is a lot more involved in the live performance aspect of things. When it comes to the actual production, so far with my studio songs, she hasn't really had a role. Um, but we've been performing together for a really long time now, several years. So when I say jargon, that doesn't mean anything in the music world. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, oh, can you do that tappy thing again? And she knows exactly what I mean. And nobody else would. <laughs> but um, in terms of the actual production process, she hasn't been involved uh, as of yet. Big smile on Hibba's face, so everything must be good. Yeah. Yeah, everything I hope is so. <laughs> um, I'll be working on a song for Rosie in the future for sure. Mm -hmm. Something that I'm really excited to do. And, you know, she's sent a bit of exclusive lyrics my way yeah. um, when I get into that sort of myself. But as of now, um, I just one day I randomly said, hey, my aunt wants us to perform yeah. for some uh, <laughs> some little awards night she was hosting for it. Um, I don't know if you know, but there's another community association around here called the Coalition of Muslim Women. So they yes. were just hosting. Yes. Um, they're like hosting like uh, an arts night for like people in that community. And mm -hmm. my aunt saw that I picked up guitar two months ago. She said, you, you do it. I was like, <laughs> I don't know how to play guitar, but I remembered that my friend Rosie from grade nine geography could sing. <laughs> and yeah, that's the Rosie and Hibba duo was born. Aww. So she we has just- been overworked since that day. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> We've been looking at her nonstop. But, yeah. I'll have to get yeah. you back in and mm -hmm. doing some performing on the air just as Hiba solo, oh, yeah. possibly sure. with a bit of vocal accompaniment in the background. You oh, get yeah. to do the oohs and the ahs. And that's it. And that's <laughs> it. I won't overstep. <laughs> but yeah, Hiba and I have been performing for many, many years now, which is nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, lots of noise in the background here. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's a, mm -hmm. a community radio, stu uh, st radio station, you know, studio in, in the middle of an old building. and <laughs> There's going to be the community sound, around. The sound yeah. carries, yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you working on now? Oh, uh, okay. I'm working on a couple things. So I've got a couple projects in the work that I can't say are official just yet. Um, so I won't say too much about those, but obviously new music as always. Um, I did want to dip my toes in a couple different things. Um, I have an upcoming jazz gig at the Jazz Room, April Ooh, 21st. You guys can go check that out. Um, it's with Caleb Koo. He's an incredible guitarist um, mm -hmm. in in Kitchener-Waterloo. He's fantastic. And um, the Jazz Room is definitely a little bit uh, more jazz than what I'm used to. I do mostly pop, as you can hear in my yeah, songs. Yeah. I'm really into pop and maybe a little bit of R&B. Um, but I largely got into music especially in high school because of jazz so the fact that i'm able to do a real like jazz gig in the jazz room is such an honor so i'm really really excited oh. about that that's kind of the biggest thing on the horizon right now that i'm looking forward yeah. to what date is that that's april 21st thank you for asking <laughs> it's at the jazz room in waterloo so go get your tickets yes mm -hmm. yes yeah. you do a lot of live performing yeah. I, I really only know you as a studio musician. So. Yeah, well, I do a lot of uh, live performing because actually a, a lot of people think that you get, for some reason, they think that the majority of like a musician's income comes from streaming, but that's actually really, really not the case. A little bit of it is radio play, which is great. Um, a little bit of it is streaming, but the vast majority of the income for a musician, especially the straightforward income, like income that comes on the spot when you... Are performing is live performances mm -hmm. um so yeah i do a lot of live performances i really do anything at this point uh kind of like anything from restaurants pubs but i've done art gallery openings um festivals 
uh, kind of all sorts of different things all over KW and um, a little bit in the GTA as well. So. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. And have you been affected by the pandemic? I guess if you got started at the start of the pandemic, then yeah. everything is just looking better now than it did before. It's definitely looking better <laughs> now. Um, thank God. I was, you know, I think a lot of musicians suffered a lot during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, I will say that first and foremost, even though I am a musician and I do um, love doing that, I'm a student as well. So the time during 2020 when the pandemic hit um, was really just time for me to put my head down and grind when it came to my mm -hmm. studies. Uh, so I didn't feel that hit as hard as someone who was working on actual living income um, off of live performances. I'm very grateful for that. Um, but the pandemic was definitely difficult, and especially musically, if you're trying to get on your feet and then all of a sudden everything shuts down, it was definitely a bit of a kind of like a hindrance at the beginning. But I got back up on my feet afterwards, and it's been rainbows and sunshine since. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. How do you get the gigs? Well, oh, good question. <laughs> I get... Um, well, first I had... Uh, in high school, my first ever, like first ever paid gig, I was doing um, jazz in the schools, which is with a lovely woman. Her name is MC Pisano, Mary Catherine Pisano, if you've heard of her. She's a wonderful jazz musician in KW. Um, and she had like mentored me for a couple years. And she was like, listen, they're doing like um, at the KW Registry Theater, actually the Bright Up Brothers, which is funny because the street right here is yeah, called yeah, Bright yeah. Up. The Bright Up Brothers, the original Bright Up Brothers are coming back in from LA. They want to perform a whole jazz concert and they want a studio. Um, excuse me, a student performer. And I was wondering if you were interested. So I was 15 at the time. I had never seen that much money in my life. And I was like, oh my God, they're <laughs> paying me to sing. And I was like, what? It was the coolest thing that I think had ever happened to me in my 15 years of being alive. So um, I performed at the KW Registry Theater. Um, since then, I've done, you know, mostly like school things, school related things that was in high school. And then when I got to university, um, I got to meet, you know, I worked closely with Hiba and we kind of got into this gig known as like there was like a neighbor's day gig in KW. Mm. And that's where I met Caleb, who is a guitarist that I'm doing yeah, that gig yeah. with on April uh -huh. 21st. Um, and he's fantastic. He is ridiculously connected within the community. So as soon as I showed up on the scene with him it was a lot easier for me to get um, my foot in the door, basically, because yeah. it was really, you know, he was really well known and um, he put me on a lot of gigs. So, yeah, it was thanks to him. So okay. shout out to Caleb. <laughs> Caleb is sort of your um, your manager, your... Um, Not even. No? He's no? actually younger than me. He's 19. This okay. kid, he's 19. He's ridiculously <laughs> talented and ridiculously connected as well. So, okay. yeah, it was kind of through him mostly. And now that... Um, I still do gigs with him, obviously, but now I'm a little bit better known with some of the city okay. planners, and um, it's a lot easier for me to be recognized or to be reached out to. I was just wondering how you might get a hold of booking agents, uh, you know, oh. publicists, things like that. But you're doing that on your own. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's definitely challenging yeah. because I'm assuming that a manager or an agent would be able to do that a lot better than me. Oh. But um, it's a work in progress. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So now you not only have to do the job of singing, but you have to do the job of managing yourself as well. The majority of the like actual tedious work is the managing itself. <laughs> like, I I, and I'm sure all creatives will tell you this because even like artists that I see that are local, the work isn't doing the art. The work is selling the art, promoting the art, uh, being active on social media, going to community events. Um, mm -hmm. Like this is not something that I would, this experience right here, I'm having such a wonderful time. I wouldn't really consider it work. I would consider work emailing a bunch of radio stations and hearing back. Right. That's where the work actually comes in. So yeah. yeah, unfortunately for the majority of artists, that is the reality of the situation is the very, very minority of that time is spent doing the actual art that you love doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you set a time apart to do the actual art to you know, do the composing to practice to... I said time, definitely. I'm juggling a lot of things right now. I have a full-time course load. I'm doing a research position uh, and a second research position. Um, I didn't mention this earlier. I'm an honor science student at the University of Waterloo, and I have a double minor. So it's a lot going on, to be honest. What branch of science? Uh, it's, so my degree is just called honor science, but it's oh. mostly biology. And then I have a minor in medical physiology and a second minor in Islamic studies. 
So it's a lot, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Um, I love my studies, though. I, I love being a UW student, and I'm very sad to be graduating yeah. this term. Yeah. But in addition to that, um, I recently had to stop doing a bunch of my volunteering opportunities because it was just getting a lot on my plate. Yeah. Um, and then I also have music, and I have you know family endeavors and, and all of that sort of thing. So yeah. it, it's been a lot, but I do try to put mu- music... Um, at least in its own little thing where I have some time to do it because it's the only thing like that keeps me from going crazy sometimes. Yeah. You a musician with science as a fallback or a scientist <laughs> with music as a fallback? I, hmm, I think about if my parents are going to watch this. <laughs> 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 I'm going to say, I'm going to be very optimistic and say musician with a science fallback. Excellent. But we should also be realistic. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say musician for now. Um, I did have kind of a, a little bit of a, moment last year where I was thinking, you know, if I were to get like a job in the science area and someone were to ask me, what do you do? I would like, well, I'm a biologist, but I'm also a musician. It's a very strange intersection. I would say I chose two disciplines that have zero to do with one another. So yeah, yeah. but I'm very happy doing that. I like that dichotomy a lot. It's funny. (laughs) I've heard that in any science department, Mm -hmm. um, you're always able to put together a pickup band because scientists tend to be musicians too. Really? Okay. Well, not necessarily the reverse. Not all musicians are scientists, but almost all scientists have some dabbling in music. That's a really good way to put it. I will say that um, a lot of the people that I do gigs with for some reason have some kind of like interest in math or science because i'm assuming it's so rhythmic and technical that there is a lot of math involved um me personally i can i'm not good at math but (laughs) not gonna math your music not (laughs) yeah Yeah, but um yeah i work with a lot of people who actually have like formal education in in music and that is very intimidating because i don't really have that like i don't Mm -hmm. i can't read sheet music i can't um play any instruments so that's kind of intimidating but Mm -hmm. Otherwise, something to work yeah. on. Something to work on for sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's put Hibba to work again. <laughs> you have something else to play? Oh, we do. We have two more songs. So we're going to do Sunday Afternoon. This is the one that I was mentioning earlier. This is the first song I ever recorded and released. Um, it uh, Hibba has done a really beautiful acoustic arrangement of it. I'm going to pull up the song and maybe set the tempo as well. Yeah, so... This is being done with technology. Absolutely. Rosie's busy on her phone. Uh, pulling, <laughs> um, pulling up, what, just a metronome on your phone there? No, I, I pull up the lyrics, which is kind of funny because I don't, I don't look at them. But I always get paranoid that I'm going to ah. forget them, so I always pull them up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a Gen Z thing, to be honest. I don't think <laughs> older musicians do that. <laughs> but, okay, I'm going to set the tip up. <clears throat> Tell me who you think you are You got me tripping all the words that I shouldn't say So distant you're so far Monday through Saturday Can we talk it out on Sunday afternoon? Can we work it out on Sunday afternoon? Sun is shining right through my window and Cupid's got me here with an arrow and my time is running now it's getting Got me feeling, feeling with despair Oh, and someday afternoon Oh, I'm waiting on someday
Rosie Zamoran and Abby in the studio at CKMS Community Connections. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. Thank you so much. So yeah, the original version of that sounds quite different. It's a lot more poppy and upbeat, but I really like the acoustic version because it's a lot more R&B. Yeah, and it's or more R&B. I really love the R&B influence on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it sounds like there is all kinds of opportunity for layering harmonies on top of that and yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where most of the kind of building comes in yeah you're you've got a, a show coming up on april 21st in the mm -hmm. jazz room yes would you consider yourself a jazz singer Ooh, I would you like to be a jazz singer i <laughs> think that the mystery that comes with you like i'm a jazz singer would be so cool <laughs> <laughs> but realistically i would say that i'm a pop singer r&b singer maybe okay. um Jazz singer, I would love to be considered a jazz singer in certain contexts, but overall, um, the reality is my scatting is definitely too subpar to be an actual ah. legitimate jazz singer. I also feel like jazz musicians are the most, you would expect them to be very laid back, but I would expect, I would say that they are very uptight and regulated in how they define <laughs> jazz. Intense. And, yeah, very intense, like very specific about the instrumentals and about scatting and about mm -hmm. scales and I think that's very admirable, um, but it's definitely not something that I can relate to as someone yeah. who doesn't even read music, right? So. Yeah. I'm just thinking there's a lot of standards out there you know, for, for female vocalists and yeah. uh, something you do, do you cover other people's music? I do. That's how I kind of got started with music in general, especially when I was younger. I didn't write anything and I did a lot of covers uh, of other people's music. I get told quite a bit that I sound, or I have a little bit of influence from Ariana Grande, who I am a big fan uh. of. Um, I definitely like her. I like Mariah Carey a lot. I grew up like listening to all the pop divas like Demi Lovato and Ariana Grande, like I just said. And yeah, they definitely had an influence on me. So when I was younger, I would cover a lot of their music. And I think from that, it honestly strengthened my vocals. Like, I mean, can you imagine at like 11 years old trying to sing like Beyonce? Like, oh, you know, I was yeah. really putting myself to the test. <laughs> but I think that it helped me become a stronger musician because yeah. of it. An 11 year old, that's a lot of power to try to convey. Yeah, and I definitely didn't didn't reach the bar. It was a Beyonce uh -huh. song of an 11 year old. But, <laughs> but you know, always setting yourself up. Yeah. Shoot for the shoot for the stars, you land on the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That, that's a good place to be on the moon. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so when you're performing, when you're performing on, at, at the mm -hmm. jazz room, will you be covering other musicians' songs or is that, it all Rosie Samra music? No, actually, none of that is Rosie Samra music. It's really? All, it's actually Caleb's. Uh, gig it's his show oh, oh, oh. and I will be performing seven or eight songs out of ten songs the other two will be fully instrumental um, but we're, we're also working with a bass guitar player Mitch and a wonderful drum player as well named Matt and all the musicians I feel like are just really fantastic they are so well trained and um, we'll be doing kind of standards um i was okay. told that if we do frank sinatra at the jazz room we'll get booed off it's too Ooh. it's too generic <laughs> they will not have it no frank sinatra and no ella fitzgerald no um louis really sorry, none of that no because i mean it, apparently i i was very new to this concept as well but apparently it's very pretentious to assume that you could do a jazz standard better mm. than Nat King Cole. Okay. Which I think is a very pretentious point of view to have. <laughs> but there's some truth to that, I suppose. There's some you know, that definitely. People expect yeah. it to be done the way that exactly. the, those musicians did it. And I think those, those songs have been done to death as well. Like somewhere like the jazz room, you're expecting to have something new or at least something with a twist of something yeah. new. And I think that the sound that we're bringing to the jazz room is less classic jazz and a lot more a new modern spin on jazz, especially even in my voice, you can hear I'm definitely more of a pop inspired singer than a jazz inspired singer. Okay, yeah. um, and I think that we're going to bring that April 21st, which I think will be really exciting okay. for the people who are there. It's a couple of months from today when we're recording this on the 24th of uh, February. Yeah. So um, come back in with Caleb uh, just before sure. that. And I then, would love uh, to. Yeah. And, yeah, and, I will. Uh, do some of that. Heavy, you're invited too. I'll <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely bring her in. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
So when you set up for something like that, how, mm. how do you get the, uh, the repertoire that Caleb is expecting you to sing? Oh, like how do I get prepared for the songs? Yeah. How, how, how do you learn them? Um, how does mm. Caleb get the music to you? Well, I know for a fact that Caleb is very paranoid about this gig because <laughs> the jazz room has very high standards. Um, so for this song and for this gig in particular, we really vetted the songs super well. Like they are songs that maybe some people would know, some people wouldn't. They're not considered standards, but they're definitely not by any means unknown. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the only song that we're doing that is kind of a standard is George On My Mind. Oh, and okay. that's it. Besides that, they're all songs that I had never heard of personally. Um, and we kind of go through them. We really take a holistic approach of, okay, singer gets a part in this, but also all of the instrumentalists do. So everybody has a say in what songs we all think would sound good, which I think is the best approach to music because the more pans on deck, the better, to be honest, especially when it comes to performing with a band. Yeah. Um, so that's how we get the songs vetted. And then for in terms of preparation, I just practice makes perfect all the time. We go in, um, we perform and we, um, excuse me, we practice at 44 Gockle, which is not too far. Oh, from yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a wonderful building. And uh, we practice there a lot. Um, just regular intervals and, and practicing at home and practice makes perfect. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You have set practice times or you get the whole band together and Put we in. do. We do Sundays. Not every single Sunday, but uh, Sundays have been working so far. Okay. How yeah. long is the practice session? Well, like three hours because <laughs> we the instrumentalists really go in. Um, the way that jazz is set up is like it's maybe one to two minutes of the singer singing and then like eight minutes of drums and guitar and, and bass and things I was never accustomed to before. Everybody getting. taking their solo there. Oh, their yeah. Spotlight. Everybody takes, yeah. takes their solo and takes their sweet time. But um, <laughs> I've been told that I have a very special role because apparently i make jazz approachable to people who don't who aren't jazz musicians because yeah. if you're an instrumentalist and you're in the crowd um you know you might be more interested in hearing the vocals i always love that i can always tell who in the crowd is an instrumentalist and who is not who is not a musician because the people who are not musicians come up to me and compliment me and the people who are musicians uh, go straight to the band go to the band but yeah. i love that i think it's really interesting that you can tell right away yeah. When you're working other gigs that aren't the jazz room, uh, how mm -hmm. is your music mm -hmm. received? Oh, well, I've done a couple times um, some of my original music. It's received pretty well, yeah. especially the last song that we'll play at the end here, Crazy. That was by far my biggest song. It's definitely had a lot more commercial success, and it's definitely the favorite child of my <laughs> song. A, yeah. lot of, a lot of people really love that one. We had um, a lot of people reaching out and, and just being really sweet about it. Um, so that one in particular is always received well. It's never been received poorly, thankfully. Oh, good, um, good. With On My Own, it is a little bit newer. I haven't had the chance to perform it live personally yet, um, but hopefully that opportunity will come pretty soon. Right. Um, yeah, I'm excited to yeah. perform that one and see how it's received. You ever in a, a place where nobody's really paying attention to you performing? And, oh, yeah. You know, there's <laughs> chattering going on and... Yeah, it honestly depends on what they hired me for. Like, they hired me for an art studio, like, gallery opening. That was really fun. Um, and we had, it, it's really interesting. My favorite thing about performing live is sometimes you'll have people who are really listening for the music. Uh -huh. And if they like you, they will make you feel like the most special person on earth. Like, I had these four wonderful women. One of them actually does the Bond Park podcast. If oh, you've yes, heard of yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we have that on the air once in a while. She's wonderful. And she was at the, at the gallery. And she heard it. And she just sat down. And she made all her friends sit down. And she said, everybody listen to this girl. She's so great. And it was so sweet. And um, so sometimes it plays out like that. Sometimes I've had gigs where I go to a restaurant and it's very clear that the food is the star of the show and I'm kind uh, of just yeah. the background. And um, to be honest, I like those gigs too. It puts a lot less pressure on me, but obviously I definitely love yeah. attention in the spotlight. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, in some of those venues, I can imagine that people want to hear mm -hmm. stuff they've heard before. They don't want to hear Rosie Samra. Um, oh originals. yeah we'll do even like i've done busking in uptown waterloo yeah. and by far the most popular song tennessee whiskey every time every time because we perform it right when the students are lining up to go into the club across from the street oh. and they love tennessee whiskey 
because they're going in to drink. So, I suppose, yeah. So it makes sense. So, yeah. yeah, I was not expecting a bunch of university students to be into country music, but they love that song. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of country musicians um, at yeah. the universities. And, yeah. You know, Got to get them into the studio as well. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. So you said Crazy. Crazy is the last song we've got, and it's definitely, like I said, the favorite child of the song, so I'm very excited to perform it. We can do that one next. Want to do that next? Yes. Okay, want to do that now? Yeah. Or is it too, too soon? I mean, it's up to you. Well, let's, do it. let's do it now. <laughs> okay. This is Crazy with uh, Rosie Samra and Abby live in the studio at CKMS Community Connections. Okay, I'm going to set the tempo. When you walk into a room I get so... <clears throat> Into a room I get so excited Like a spark you ignited I just cannot hide it Do you even know the power that you have when you're around? I'll let you light in I just cannot fight it And if I'm going too fast we could take it down And I should maybe take it slow Cause I'm not trying to rush you, tell me what it is you want to get personal I'm crazy over you, there is no question about who I wanna be It's true, you know, I'm crazy Boy, I'm crazy over you, there is no question about who I wanna be with It's true, you know, I'm crazy Sometimes I wonder if you even know you're perfect My whole life I've been searching For someone that's worth it Your hair, your smile, your lips, your eyes How you do that? You make me nervous More than just on the surface And baby, I should say that I'm not trying to play no games And maybe you should know Every time I see you, I just wanna let it loose. I wanna lose control. I'm crazy over you. There is no question about who I wanna be with. It's true, you know, I'm crazy. Boy, I'm crazy over you. There is no question about who I wanna be with. It's true, you know, I'm crazy. I just keep on hoping that you feel the same Mama just going psycho, totally insane You shut know on tired, playing all these games Can we just call it a time? What do you say? Can you make the first move? Can you hurry up? Am I being too forward? Is it obvious? Are you in a me too? Are you feeling us? Got so many questions, I'm just curious Boy, I'm crazy over you There is no question about who by Rosie Samra, accompanied by Hiba on the guitar. I can see why that's people's favorites. It's got that <laughs> lovely little run in there. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm glad to yeah. hear that. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's nice. You. you mentioned to me earlier that um, you grew up with social media. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I did. So does that influence what you write? Oh, my gosh, that is such a good question. It does influence what I write. I think it influenced how I live my life, to be honest. When you see yourself um, in photos or in videos, especially the fact that I am an entertainer, um, watching those videos back, it's so easy to focus in on what you don't like about the way that you look, about the way that you sound, about the way that you perform. Um, And I think that social media is so, so destructive and definitely the cause of this. Because what do you see on social media when you're being realistic? Like you see the best version of people and the best version of themselves being put forward. You don't actually get to see what they look like without 
filters or, you know, without the camera being posed at that perfect angle or without the perfect lighting or you don't actually get to see those things. So the fact that I grew up with that and having that as my role model, I mean, I can't even imagine what it's like for kids who genuinely grew up with, you know, have getting phones before they were even like 10 or 11. Um, because I've heard that that's something that's going on a lot more now. Kids are getting phones a lot younger and that just freaks me out so bad because I think about when I was 13 and I started using social media, how drastic it changed my self perception. And like I said, especially now as an entertainer, I watch myself back all the time and that used to be really, really detrimental. It was something I had to work on a lot. Um, because like I said, it's so easy to pick apart any little part that you didn't feel like you could have excelled there. Yeah, I was yeah. just scrolling through both your TikTok and your Instagram <laughs> accounts. Yeah. And it looks like you've got a lot of candid stuff in TikTok. Oh. <laughs> I don't Things. use I don't use um, filters, I will say that, <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, although definitely I've had days where I have like a blemish or something and I'll be like, well, now I can't film anything because I look <laughs> so awful. <laughs> and it's yeah. definitely, I thought it was just me, but almost everyone that I know literally goes through the exact same thing and I think it's a lot harder on women in particular yeah. like that that beauty standard is so so ingrained into our generation um yeah it's it's pretty depressing to think about but uh on TikTok and on Instagram I'm definitely careful with what I post because okay. that internet footprint stays around okay the uh, Instagram account on the other hand is all your glam shots oh yeah that's uh, what I'm <laughs> yeah. yeah I think that Instagram is where I get more a lot more traffic you would expect uh TikTok to have because there's more users, then it might be easier um, for people to discover me type thing. Um, but Instagram is really where I pose as a professional musician. Like it's Rosie Samra music. It's not yes. just Rosie Samra. Okay. Um, it has to be giving off the essence of me as a musician and me as an entertainer. So that's why I'm not as liberal with the things I post on there. I'm very um, succinct and I don't really like using social media outside of promoting music. Um, so I try to stay away from right. it as much as possible. I see you've got a couple of accounts, Twitter notably, where you're there, but I'm you know, kind private. of kind of hidden in the back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think Twitter's a definitely a slippery slope because it's very political in there, and that is not something I want to be associated with as no, a musician. No. It, it's declined a lot over the last few months too, so oh, you're not yeah. missing anything. Oh, <laughs> good. That's good to hear. <laughs> so those glam shots on uh, Instagram, yeah, uh, they look wonderful. What was the photo shoot like? Oh. It was wonderful. I'm finally getting the chance to shout out one of my absolute best friends. His name is Angad Singh. He is the most incredible photographer. He does all of my photo shoots. I've known him since high school. He is fantastic. I am the biggest fan of him. He sets up basically every photo shoot that we do. I let him, he's he's kind of lucky in the way because he gets to hear everything before it comes out. All oh. the studio stuff, all the raw stuff. And um, he loves doing that because he loves being exclusive and all that. And yeah. he'll listen to the song and we'll come up with a mood board of what exactly we want. So with Miss Connection, which you can see up there, that's the photo with the phone. And I also used a photo from the photo shoot for today's um, broadcast. Uh, you can actually see little props he brought those in um the phone was mine but the little heart was his and uh we did it at the at a studio a photo studio in uh, mississauga and um yeah he is fantastic he's brilliant he does all the editing all the uh post all the um in the actual photo shoots and i will say that in the photo shoots it is very difficult to feel like yourself or feel confident like i feel like when you're surrounded by just empty space and props and you're kind of being told act this way or look this way it's very very intimidating especially like i said as someone who you know likes to look back at that stuff and tear it apart and kind of is a, a little bit of a perfectionist and i will say angad has never made me feel anything but 100 percent um, comfortable and confident in myself as a photo model, which is so great. I'm so grateful to have him. He's so wonderful. you recommend him to all other musicians? I recommend him to anyone right. and everyone. He does headshots too. I think he does like professional. Um, and he's a working student as well, just like okay. me. So we're both at the University of Waterloo and um, he somehow manages to find time for this. He has a huge passion for it as well. Wow, it's mm -hmm. incredible how many people have their passions that need to take a back seat to real life. It's very upsetting. I know. Yeah. I wish I honestly, I wish I could be like a full time musician all the time. Like that would be totally a dream. But I, I love studying biology as well. So I'm not complaining. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll come, you know, if uh, exactly. it depends on uh, where you put your focus. But if the focus is on music right now, mm -hmm. that's what's going to take over. <laughs> uh, and the world is richer for it. 
Well, thank you. Don't tempt me. (laughs) (laughs) So, you want to run down your uh, social media and your contact information? So, if anybody wants to hire Rosie Samara to sing Um. at their events... (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. So, like I said, my Instagram handle is at Rosie Samra Music. Um, it's public, uh, unlike my Twitter account. But you can also look me up on TikTok. It's just my name, Rosie Samra. Um, you can find my handles there. Um, you can also reach out to me on email if you'd like to book any kind of gig with me or hire me for anything. That's Rosie Samra four zero zero eight at gmail dot com. Um, I also have it linked in my link tree, which I will add to my link tree later on. But if you just click there, you'll find yeah. all my contact information. And uh, yeah, reach out to me at any time. Good. We'll have all those links on mm-hmm. our website as well for the show notes. RadioWaterloo dot ca slash ccc. Thank you so much. Able to look up. Uh, all of the information and get Rosie to perform for you. (laughs) Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, So we're almost at the end of the hour here. Mm -hmm. Uh, You've got an upcoming gig on the 21st. Anything Mm -hmm. else planned in the near future? Uh, Just working on studio stuff, to be honest. So I got to keep my mouth zipped about that because I don't know (laughs) when it'll be coming out. Okay. um, But uh, yeah, that upcoming gig is really big on the horizon. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, that's that's a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, you're available for other gigs. It's, uh, I'm available for other gigs. Like I said, I'm graduating soon, so I'll have oh. a little bit more free time on my hands. If good. anybody wants to hire me, feel free. <laughs> good, 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 good. good. Yes. And you, Hiba, what are you doing for mm-hmm. uh, gigs and, and performances and such? Uh, well, actually, I um, am in the UW and a music ensemble as well. So uh, what we do is that we do uh, covers, mostly original arrangements of music from popular video games and anime. Uh, so if that's something that people are interested in or if they just want to come by and hear music, our project, is, our concert is projected to be April 2nd, um, still in the works, but most likely okay. Sunday, April 2nd. And it would be in M3, which is uh, one of the buildings at University of Waterloo. Um, other than that, I recently just started posting guitar covers on my Instagram, um, which is at Instance Crush, or you can find me through Rosie's Instagram as well pretty easily. Okay. Um, I only recently started doing that just two weeks ago, but I aim to have more consistent stuff up uh, twice a month or so. Um, and then, you know, just gonna be working on stuff for Rosie in the future. And yeah, that's basically what I've lined up. But um, if again, if you're interested in just hearing live music or interested in video games or anime, then make sure to check out UW underscore Animusic on Instagram. And the music, excellent. We'll have you in at some point, uh, but we'll certainly have your contact information on the website as well. Awesome, yeah. thank you. It's almost time to go. So, it's been wonderful to have you in. Rosie Samra, mm-hmm. doing a live on-air performance here on CKMS Community Connections, and Hiba too, providing some uh, accompaniment. Mm-hmm. you want to accompany me out as sure. I give the end credits? What sure. are you playing? Thank you so uh, much again for having me. Oh, you're welcome, Rosie. Mm-hmm. Come back sometime in April for uh, Caleb, a, yeah. a precy for your... Jazz Room mm-hmm. concert. Thank you. Yeah. What have you got, Hiba? I'll just play that little instrumental of On My Own so you can, you know, have a little bit of a happier version. <laughs> uh, it, gives, it gives some people some credit over this song. <laughs> the happier version of On My Own, yeah. written by Rosie Samra, played by Hiba on guitar. <laughs> exactly. You've been listening to CKMS Community Connections here on Radio Waterloo. CKMS Community Connections is sponsored by Radio Waterloo. It's a production of Radio Waterloo. The executive producer is Jennifer Strong. Associate producer is Jeff Steger. And our opening theme music was written by Steve Todd. You've been listening to Hibba playing on guitar. And we've had Rosie Samra in the studio doing a live on-air performance. Thank you again, both of you. And if you want to play us out, then we'll uh, move, move along. And we'll be back next week. So, yes, we'll be back next week, and uh, the announcement here is that uh, CKM's Community Connections will be switching to alternate weeks, uh, but we're still every week on Monday at 11 o'clock. Have a happy Friday, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>